Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And today uh, we're talking about liberty's cost. Uh, this week our nation will be celebrating the 4th of July, uh, where we declared our independence uh, from uh, England. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about liberty today. And as you're doing whatever it is that you're going to do on the 4th, uh, give you something to talk to some folks about yourself. Amen? Other than call 911, we just lit the field on fire. You know, you don't want to do any of that. So in Luke chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 14. Jesus has just gotten done uh, having his uh, encounter with the devil in the wilderness. Got the victory over him in that. And we're going to pick the story up. And it says, And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through all the surrounding districts. And he began to teaching in their synagogues and was praised by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as he was, was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set free those who are oppressed and proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Now he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and all the eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Okay, this was a uh, Messianic prophecy written by Isaiah, and Jesus is saying, this was talking about me. And today, all right, not in the future, today you can be free. Today you can have release from your captivity. Now, when we talk about liberty, we want to define our terms, so we're all talking about the same thing. Liberty defined as freedom or release from slavery, imprisonment, captivity to any form of arbitrary control. The limits within a certain amounts of freedom may be exercised, freedom to choose. Now, choosing sin is not liberty. Choosing sin is rebellion, all right? And please understand that because people say, well, you know, we're, we're free to, to obey God or not. Well, no, you're free to obey God. If you don't obey Him, that's not freedom, that's rebellion, Okay, that's why it's important that we understand something. You're going to serve someone. You're going to serve either the devil or you're going to serve the Lord. Um, there's an old Bob Dylan song that says that back in the day. One person knew that. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. Freedom also is from compulsion or liberty, I should say, is from compulsion or constraint. The liberty we have in Christ is not forced upon us. We are free to serve the Lord. That is why you and I were created. We were created to bring Him glory. We were created to see His goodness and to experience His glory, not only in this life, but in the life to come. And sin captivates us in it ties us down, and it impedes us from accomplishing that. And Jesus has come to set us free from it. Now, many times, uh, as you read through the different epistles, bondage is referred to as being under the law. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But we have been set free to follow God and enjoy all the benefits that come from serving Him. And we're also free to help other folks do that as well. Okay, If you've got your Bibles, jump over to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 1. It says, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Well, that makes sense. Therefore, or because of this, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. He came, he set us free, all right? Stay in that freedom. Don't go back, all right? You, uh, you've probably heard people say this. Uh, we, we don't experience this ourselves, but we might know somebody who did. 
they're going through a hard time as a believer and they go, you know, I remember back in the day. You know, I'm going to maybe, maybe go back to the way things were before I gave my life to Christ. There is a reason why you left that in the first place. Amen? If you look through the Old Testament, Israel, as they were going through the wilderness, every time they went through a hard time, they're like, man, I remember back when we was in Egypt, you know, we lived, you know, we had leeks and onions, and, and oh, man, those were the days. You were slaves. <laughs> you were, we forget the fact that we were slaves. And we had a very brutal taskmaster. But hard times in life causes amnesia a lot of times. And we begin to long for what we call is the good old days that really weren't that good at all. Okay? So he says, listen, don't, don't be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. There, there again, he's talking about believers who are wanting to go back to the law. And I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he's under obligation to keep the whole law. You've been severed from Christ. You have been severed from Christ, you who are seeking to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For, though, for we, though, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, it doesn't mean anything, but faith that works through love. Now, once again, one of the, the challenges that the early church had is they were delivered out of the law, they came to Christ, and because of that, they were very, very harshly persecuted uh, by the Pharisees and Sadducees. And the temptation was, you know what, I, I, I'm going to go back to that and get a little reprieve. Okay? We, you can talk to a lot of people who struggle with different addictions. And they'll say, well, if I, I'll just give in to this addiction and I'll get a reprieve. And all it does is this, it just makes that noose a little tighter. Okay? Christ has set us free, and we need to walk in, in that freedom, okay? Um, what, what works for us is faith working through love. And I, I will say this, and, and please understand uh, this truth. Where there's a lot of love, there's little law, okay? Where there's little love, you're always having to lay down the law, okay? And this applies not only to those who are giving the law, but also those who are receiving. When we have little love for the Lord, we need a lot of law to keep us constrained. When we have little love for one another, we try to control them and make them like we think they should be. But when we love folks, all right, we trust the Lord and we allow them to serve God the way that they are, are doing, as long as it doesn't contradict the word, okay? Uh, you've heard, probably heard people say, well, if you love something, you know, turn it loose, and if it comes back to you, then it's yours. That just means you're in love with a boomerang, okay? Because not always does that happen, okay? Uh, but if we love someone, we don't try to control them, Okay? We don't try to control them. Over in Psalms 119, we're going to look at verse 41. It says, May your loving kindness also come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. Once again, people will say, well, well, all roads lead to God. Well, that is true. All roads do lead to God, but only one leads to him as Savior. Everyone else leads to him as judge. And our salvation is based upon what God's word says it is. And so that's what we want to, we are free to follow that. Please understand, people will tell you, they'll say things like, well, it's, it's hard to serve God, it's hard to obey the Bible. Well, not when you genuinely love the Lord, because the Bible is, is liberating. Uh, if you, um, I believe it was uh, G.K. Chesterton wrote that if you get rid of the big laws of God, you don't get more liberty uh, but to the contrary, you get much less. Because when we don't obey God, then now man comes in and fills that vacuum. And, and today we have volumes and volumes of laws over every little thing. Okay? 
and um, we have regulations upon regulations telling us what to do, how to do it, all because we've forsaken the law of God, okay, and God's word. Anyway, back to Psalms 119. So I will have an, I will, uh, your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust your word. And do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I wait for your ordinances. So I will keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk in liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall, I won't be ashamed. I'll delight in your commandments, which I love. When we understand God's precepts, we will not be tangled up in man's precepts. Life is full of choices. We, we make them every single day. And we can be led around by society. We can be read around, led around by trying to please other people. Or we can be free to, to please the Lord. Okay? Um, man makes the simple complex. He really does. Uh, how many of you guys have ever tried to... Uh, Look at, um, or I should say, uh, anybody ever had to deal with the building department about anything? They, they take some very simple processes, and you're like, really, really? Why? Because that's what man does. We, we take things and we make them complex. You go to, a, to many Bible studies even today, and they'll take the simplicity of God's Word and make it very complex through denominational ties and different things like that. Why? Because if I can make it complex, then you need me. If you can understand it for yourself, then you don't need me. Let me tell you, every one of us here today can understand God's word. All right? What we've got to do many times is we've just got to get rid of all the fluff that man has put in and get down to the simplicity of the word of God. And he helps us to do that. He gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all truth. And sometimes we, we misread that because he makes it really plain and really simple. And because of the simplicity of it, we have a tendency of overlooking and saying, well, that, no, no, it's got to be more to it than that. And we look and we search and we take out the microscope and look for the secret hidden messages and the secret truths. And I will tell you right now, there is no secret truth. There's only truth that God reveals. Amen? And if it's a secret, all right, uh, and you want to know what it is, just say, Lord, show me the truth of your word. And if you need to know it, then he will. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at John chapter 8. The Gospel of John chapter 8 and verse 31. Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you're truly my disciples. All right. Simple enough. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, we got to continue in his word. He's, he's not a, a once and done thing. I said a prayer, now I'm done, I'm good to go, I can live like the devil. No, no, that don't work like that. He said, if you continue in my word, then you're truly disciples of mine. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. There are a lot of folks that are struggling in the body of Christ, and they're still bound simply because they don't know the truth. And the only reason we don't know the truth is because we don't apply ourselves to finding out the truth. And this is where it goes back again, one of the definitions of liberty is freedom from compulsion or, or constraint. Uh, many times, we've talked about this before, we want someone to tell us what to believe. And that's fine if they're telling you the truth. But if you're, they're telling you something that's not true, it's, it's not going to help you. So be careful. Always take uh, what anyone says and compare it to the scriptures and see if it's the truth or not. You can do that. The Holy Spirit will help you do it. Um, they say, uh, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and go all the way through 36. They answered him and said, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you'll become free? 
Well, you know, uh, they were not very good students of history because it, at the time they were uh, under the bondage to the Romans. Uh, as a history, they've been in slavery to a lot of different nations. Jesus answered and said, Truly, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son will make you free, then you will be free indeed. And if you're free indeed, that means you're no longer a slave because a slave does not endure. And he brings us from uh, slaves to being sons and daughters of God. Now, we're still servants, we, but we serve, we serve the true king and master who is the Lord. But when you talk to someone many times, you'll, you know, you'll find... Uh, how many of you guys have ever had to do an intervention on someone who's, who's got an addiction? I don't got a problem. You got a problem. I don't have a problem. I don't have any. Well, no, actually, yeah, you do. No, I, we have a tendency of denying ourselves. It goes back to being a slave in, e in Egypt. You know, we're, we're, we're in denial. And, uh, you know, but he will set us free from those things if we submit ourselves to him. Now, being free, though, comes at a cost. Now, this, uh, this week, once again, we're going to be celebrating uh, July 4th, uh, our Independence Day. Um, if you were to ask a lot of people uh, how all that came about, uh, you would get a variety of different answers. I, I will say this to you, and it's to our shame, most people do not know basic American history. All right. When our signers declared independence from England, the majority of the citizens of this country did not want it. They wanted to stay under the guise and the overreach of England because that's what they were used to. And they didn't have confidence that they were going to be able to, to govern themselves. And you can talk to a lot of folks today, you can tell them about being free in Christ, but they were like, I don't even know if I want that. Because my whole life has been something different. And I don't know if I can do it. But these men did because they had an understanding and a mandate. I believe it was a mandate from the Lord. But out of those 56 uh, original signers, uh, nine died from wounds or hardships during the war. Five were captured and imprisoned. Uh, in each case, treated very brutally in their imprisonment. Several of them lost their wives, their sons, or their entire families. Uh, one of the signers lost 13 of his children. Uh, all were at one time or another victims of manhunts driven from their homes. Uh, Twelve had their homes completely burned down. Seventeen lost everything they owned. Yet not one of them ever went back on their declaration and their commitment to freedom. It costs a lot, okay? Um, the 56 signers um, proved by their very deeds that when they signed that document, it wasn't just an idle boast. It wasn't just some current fad. And their declaration on that was we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And they had to prove it, and they did. And that's one reason why we're in the place, well, yeah, actually it is one reason why we're in the place we are today. Because they believe that men can govern themselves. Now sometimes that government, that governing of self means we do some stupid stuff. But as the body of Christ seeks God's face, he has a good habit of writing the ship when it needs to be done. Amen. That's why prayer is such an important thing. The disciples uh, were, came to Christ. They were set free. There were many other believers set free. Uh, what happened to them? They were all martyred, except for John. Uh, you look at the history of the first century church, uh, died horrific deaths. Why? Because freedom costs. 
All right. Freedom does cost. Uh, in our nation, we have, there are many times that we have gone to fight wars because we uh, are fighting for freedom either for ourselves or from, from some other nation. And we have spent a lot of blood of our sons and daughters over the years for the cause of liberty. Um, God, in his mercy to free us, sent his son to the cross. Not only did he send his son to the cross, but he lived a life as a man, though he was God, humbled himself and endured the humiliation of re and the rejection of the very people he created. Yeah, it cost him something to redeem us. And then we, in a contemporary society today, now we, we don't um, have a lot of the issues that the first century church did. We don't have a lot of the issues that our nation had at its founding. But you know what? We have to make sacrifices daily on whether or not we're going to live in godliness or not. There are choices that each one of us, we have to make continually. Am I going to live a godly life for my Lord or am I going to live a self-pleasing, selfish life? Or am I going to live a life that is committed to rebellion to the Lord. We have to make those decisions on a daily basis. So yeah, we, it costs us something to be free. And that cost is a death to self. That's why Jesus said, if anyone comes after me, he's got to deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Yeah, it costs something. But that cost is well worth it. Because what we get in return far outweighs what we have to give up. Over in, in the book of Acts, in uh, chapter 3 and 4, if you notice, notice we're not going to go through the whole thing. Um, but it's an interesting, interesting, uh, the Holy Spirit has come, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit came, things are going crazy, we talked about this before. Uh, Peter and John, uh, they're going up to the temple to pray, and there's a man who'd been uh, lame from his mother's womb, and it says he was carried along. They sat down every day at the gate of the temple uh, in order to beg alms of those who were in the temple. Now, this guy we know is about 40 years old. So for 40 years, this guy's been lame. All right? Um, and they would take him up, and he would beg for money at the temple because that, that was the only way he could survive. Well, we know the story. Uh, they come. He, he looks at them. Hey, you got some, got some coin for me? And he said, well... Silver and gold we don't have, but in the name of Jesus, get them walk. And he did. It was just a crazy time. And everyone's going just bananas over it. And people are, are, are flocking around and, like, and they're shouting hallelujahs and they're excited. And, and Peter and John are like, you know, hey, hey, it ain't us. It's not us. It's the Lord Jesus, whom, by the way, you guys crucified. And he begins to preach a sermon to them and and as a result, they begin to repent. And they begin to call upon the Lord. Now, you would think that this is a shout in time. What happens next? They get arrested. Why do they get arrested? Because they're preaching the gospel. And the powers that be don't like that. So we had this great miracle. Bam. All right. Woohoo. This could be great. Man, I didn't know ministry was this great. <laughs> You know, what? <laughs> and now I find myself in jail. Thanks a lot, God. No, they didn't do that. They said, thank you, Lord. Because Jesus said that these things would happen. They were joyful because they were counted worthy. They were counted worthy to suffer for the Lord's sake. Over in verse uh, 13, He tells me, he says, uh, you guys asked for, you, you, you rejected Christ, asked for a murderer. Yeah, true story. True story. In verse 26, for you first God raised up his servant, sent to bless you by, by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. That's why he came to set you guys free. You can be free. They made the proper choice. Uh, once again, 
They're arrested. They're threatening them. You guys quit talking like this. Uh, if Interesting, in verse 13, it says, Now, as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus. You know, these guys, we just arrested them. We put them in jail for preaching the gospel. You know, there's something about these guys, though. I think they've been with Jesus. Do people see that in our lives? When they look at us, when they, when they listen to us, they, do they recognize that we've spent time with Jesus? Well, I, I, I hope so. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in reply. He didn't get healed. Yeah, he's standing right here. Okay, well, maybe he did. All right, but he got nothing to say because the proof's in the pudding. The guy was lame, 40 years. He's standing up. He's, he ain't lame no more. What are you going to say? There's nothing to say. So they threatened him. You guys don't do this anymore. Get out of here. Uh, we, we see you do this again. We're going to let you have it. And a lot of folks at that point in time would knuckle under and say, okay. But they didn't. Verse 21, or verse 29. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant to your bondservants that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. Don't you say this again. Don't you talk about Jesus again. Lord, help us to speak with more confidence. While you extend your hand to heal, signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place that they had gathered were, together were shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. The powers that be came and said, yeah, you guys stop doing this. And they said, no, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to continue because this is the right thing. People need to be free. It used to be that you could talk about the Lord just about anywhere in this country. Not so much anymore. Okay? Not so much. You still can. Nothing, nothing as far as that has changed. But are we free or are we bound? Well, that decision depends on us. If I'm serving the Lord, then I'm free. If I'm fearing man, then I'm bound. Amen? Man will tell you that you cannot speak the name of Jesus. Man will give you all kinds of reasons why that is. He'll, he'll call you all kinds of names about it. But they're all vain lies. You have the liberty to speak the truth. But if you're going to speak the truth, make sure you speak it in love. Because that's what the Bible tells us to do. See, liberty changes our circumstances. And that, that in turn changes our priorities. For example, this man was, was a, a beggar. And, and now all of a sudden he's healed. Well, the obvious thing that's going to change for him is he can't beg no more. Now he's got to get a job. Do you think he's bummed out about that? No. <laughs> hey, hook me up. You know, I'll pass out stickers at Walmart. I don't care. Just give me a job. All right? But now he can't beg because that life is over. And see, freedom will demand that we change. I've talked to many people over the years who have a wayward spouse or wayward children and and we, we pray and we seek God's face for them. And then all of a sudden, one day, it happens and they, they change and they repent. And usually the person that struggles the most with that is the person that's been praying for them. Because they built their entire life relating to them in a certain way. And now they have to change. Because that person's been set free. And it can be tough. It's not impossible. It can be done. But we have to change as well. Okay. Um, I'll let you guys go ahead and finish this, the other scriptures out on your own. We're, we're kind of getting out of time here. But I do want to finish in Hebrews chapter 12. 
It says, therefore, since we've so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Being free is costly, but it is worth it. Uh, The things that we have in our nation right now facing us are very difficult, but yet to stay the course and to serve the Lord in it, it's worth it. Do not ever give up on anyone. Amen? And uh, you cannot force someone to be free, but you can sure pray for them. And then the Holy Spirit begins to move upon them. Amen? Uh, I knew a, and I'll close with this, I knew a, a gal, her son was very much in rebellion to the Lord, in rebellion to her as well. And she began to pray for him. And he began to get caught. Every time he tried to do something, he'd get caught. And he's like, and, he get, and the more he tried to do wrong, the more he'd get caught, and the more frustrated he'd get. And finally he's like, I, I, I can't do anything, and I keep getting caught. She goes, well, you know what, I've just, and he goes, and you haven't been nagging on me or anything? She said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm turning you over to the Lord. And he goes, oh, man. And he, rep- he repented right there. He says, I don't, I don't want none of that. I don't, I don't. And he repented right then because he realized that, you know what? Um, I need to not fight God. Pray for people, all right? Pray for them. Seek God's face for their freedom. They desperately need it. Amen? All right, let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for today. We thank you for your, your liberty that you give us. But Lord, even in that liberty, uh, you don't force us. You transfer us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of your Son, as it says in Colossians, and we've got to decide, do we want to stay there or not? Well, for, for many people, they say, you know what, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, hook me up. But so, for some folks, for whatever reason, they say, no, I, I think I'll go back to darkness. Lord, I pray that you would help us not to give up on folks. Lord, help us to to be willing to endure uh, the disappointment when people fail us. Help us to endure the, the chastisement when they speak against us and rail against us. Maybe uh, some folks well, are, are making fun of you right now. Lord, help us to endure that. Help us to keep our eyes focused upon you so that we would not lose heart. And that, Lord, we would not give up. You tell us that we're to be faithful to the end. And we thank you for helping us to do that very thing in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're in need of prayer, uh, we're here to pray with you. We're going to have a a moment of worship. And if you need some prayer, come on down and let us pray with you. Uh, It's a great day today. Amen. Don't light any unnecessary fires this week. (laughs) No one's allowed to step on sparklers or anything like that. Be safe, please. Keep keep, keep an eye on your kids while they're running around with stuff like that. Amen? All right.